The opinions expressed in the following program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Rogers or Rogers TV. Talking transit chaos and construction. That's next on Trending in York Region. Hi, and welcome to Trending in York Region. I'm your host, Gila Marto. Some of the topics that are trending in our community this week include the rise in York Region transit bus fares and the traffic chaos associated with construction of bus-only lanes in the region. With me now, Newmarket Councillor Maddie DiMuccio and Alden Houdanen, a Vaughan resident who is politically engaged and travels to work on public transit. Good for you, Alden. So, you know what, Maddie? What's it going to take to get people on public transit? Is this uh, a viable thing you see for York Region happening? that uh, a majority of residents will take public transit instead of now where most people are taking cars? Well, you know what, I'm, first of all, I am a huge supporter of public transit. I'm a huge supporter of good public transit. Um, <clears throat> and if, uh, if you know, the public thought they were going to get a politician to come here and rally for the great public transit that we have, then I'm not your girl. Because the reality is I think there's a lot of uh, holes in the system. And uh, I think that we need to make this a very public discussion. So you feel it's kind of like a chain in the link? Would you agree, Alden, that public transit, in order to work well, it has to be perfect? If there's one weak link, people back off. I think it has to be perfect. Um, I think there's a, a, a process in which we get to, to be perfect. Um, sometimes it takes a little while till we get to that point where we have um, good public transit. And that's where we have uh, p elected officials to, to step in and, and fill in those cracks and to cover those holes where, where we see in the public transit system. And we need them to, to, to make sure that we get to that point where the system is perfect. So what's going to make the system perfect, guys? Well, you know what, I think that, I think, first of all, that uh, very few politicians have the credibility to speak on, on public transit. And the reason I say that is, you know, we had the, the YRT strike. That was a very big contentious issue in New York Region. And um, there were very few politicians that came out and spoke in support of the public, uh, the students, the, you know, the people that were working, the people that were trying to get to their jobs. The only politicians, uh, I mean, I certainly spoke out about it. Um, Frank Cleese, the MPP for Newmarket Aurora, spoke out about it. But I didn't hear any of our elected officials, especially those that sit on the regional council, speak out. They were very silent. And um, it became more of a, of a fight with unions than it did. And, you know, and now, today, we're sitting here months later. And, and what do we get? We get, uh, you know, news lately, recently, that they're cutting, they're cutting routes and they're raising fees. And I'm asking, where's the, where's the service? I mean, we're getting less for, we're getting less and we're paying more. Well, that seems to be with everything with government services mm -hmm. lately. Um, I almost feel that we have to sort of take a step back. And yes, we need public transit. But what do we need public transit for in York Region? Are we going to get people to sort of go do, you know, to me, there's different levels. There's people who will just take public transit. Um, if they can get to a subway, they'll drive or take a taxi or get a lift to the, the subway, and they'll take the subway downtown. That's sort of one level of individual, and I have to say that um, I'm definitely in that group because I do take public transit to go downtown, but that's pretty much it. Um, I would say at the opposite end of the spectrum, so you say, so that's, you know, the sort of, you know, elite group of people who will only take it if it's a subway and to go downtown. Then we have the other people who, you know, don't own a car. The car is not even an option, and they take public transit everywhere. Um, maybe they can't afford a car, maybe they're a senior and they're not able to drive anymore for whatever reason. Um, they do not have a car and they have to take public transit to, to do even grocery shopping. So they're the other end of the spectrum, and we're always going to have those people. So I think we already have the downtown subway crowd and the people who have no choice, they don't have a car. Now we have the mushy middle. Uh, is what I would call it. Everybody else, how do we get them on public transit? Are they going to do, say, grocery shopping, taking their kids to hockey? What, what do you think? The, the majority of people that I know that commute from work, uh, from home to work each day, um, that, that's the main reason why they, they commute and they take public transit, is to get from A to B, which in most cases is from home to work. 
Right, and A to B, and back to A, and that's it. No mm -hmm. appointments, no no yeah. no picking up kids or yeah. And and uh, in my experience, in my 25 years of, of commuting back and forth, um, a, a, a big section that uh, that always gets left out in the discussion is is commuting to school. Um, we have the the universities uh, in in the Toronto area and the colleges in the Toronto area, and uh, commuting to those schools for the students is also a a, a big component of the people who, who commute each day. Well, and they also want to take subways. <coughs> and let's face it, people don't want to take subways just because um, they, they feel it's, you know, a more comfortable ride, which personally I think it is, but it's also because it's underground, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, Maddie, what do, you, what do you think of somebody, don't you feel bad, <coughs> don't you feel bad when you drive by somebody waiting at a bus mm -hmm. stop mm -hmm. anytime, even if the weather's okay, especially if the weather's bad, honestly, it's like you don't know how many times I have to control myself not to pull over and offer somebody a lift because you know in, much, in, much, in Montreal well. we used to do that all the time. Yeah. We used to offer people they kind of look familiar even if you didn't know them. People used to give lifts 30 years ago. Then all of a sudden the world became a scary place mm -hmm. where you don't want to interact with strangers so much. Mm -hmm. And um, you know I know my husband would you know be extremely upset with me. I, I remember giving lifts to some uh, this elderly woman who lived near me in Montreal and and people would see me driving and they would say who who was that person? I'm like I have no idea but you know, I see her standing at the grocery store. I recognize her. I know she lives near me, so I, I pull over and offer her a lift. What what can we do to get that mushy middle to not just take the, the <coughs> public transit from A to B and back to A, like Alden said, but to get them taking the bus um, to what else? What where where else could people be in say say if we're even just within York region? Let's say forget about going to Toronto. We all know people take public transit to get into Toronto because parking is so expensive. Um, within York Region, where can you imagine that we're going to convince people to go to the malls, to go see a movie at Silver City somewhere? I, I, I think York Region is, is set up in a way that we, you know, it, it still has the small village community sense to the whole entire area. You have places like Markham, you have places like Newmarket, um, the ever-growing Thornhill, um, the Promenade area. And uh, even out west of Brampton, um, I think each each of those small communities has something to offer to somebody else in another community. And if we were able to get to each community in a um, uh, a cheaper way, um, a, a way that where we leave our cars at home and, and, and well, cheaper than what? Well, cheaper than driving your car, or cheaper it, than taking a taxi? <coughs> if I may, sorry, or were you finished, Alvin? Um, go ahead. No, no, finish what you were saying, then I'll I'm okay. put well, my two cents in. You know, I, there are times where I know there are things happening in Markham, and there are things that are happening in Newmarket that um, I would like to go to. Um, a lot of times, uh, you know, it's, it's easy for me to get in my car and, and drive over there. But um, being a person who has been taking tra transit for 25 years, um, you know, it's, it's also easy for me to, to look at a bus map or to look at transit and see, you know, maybe there's another way to go there. I take today, for example, I, 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 I know the studio's in Richmond Hill. Um, and it was easy for me to drive here um, because I knew I had some errands to run after. But if I didn't have to do that, I was seriously thinking about taking the transit here. Just to see how it Just works. so you could say on the show, I came here by transit. Exactly. Did you consider that, Maddie? No, no. I would not <laughs> consider it. But um, you do raise a good question. And I think um, what we first need to understand, I think, is that who uses transportation locally? Well, locally, I think it's students, um, local workers. Those are the people that are, I don't see anyone using transit to go grocery shopping. That's just simply not going to happen. Now, mm -hmm. I could be wrong, but I've never seen it. Um, and I certainly used to take transit when I was young. But, um, but in Toronto, people take public uh, transit Toronto, to go grocery shopping. Right, but Toronto communities are very different. You can't, there's no comparison between no. Toronto communities and York Region. We're very spaced out. Um, here's the, the issue. There are many people that take transit, public transit, and they work in Toronto, they work in Mississauga. However, and, and usually these folks will take the GO train or they, they might take the, the subway. The issue is in getting the local uh, public system to work with with the larger system like the mm -hmm. subways and and that's where the issue lies and I'll tell you why we've got we've invested in Aurora for example millions of dollars to build a, 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 a garage for cars to park they drive their cars from their homes locally park their cars in the garage and then they take the go train I can guarantee you that if the public system were to work in an intelligent way so for example we've got from Green Lane to Langstaff we've got five 
bus stops, five go go uh, bus bus the stops, bus right? Uh, bus, bus, sta bus, bus stops. stops. No, there's five bus, bus stops. Okay, bus stops. And um, in order, so if I was in, in in keeping in mind between Young Street and Bayview, there's about I'd say no more than a five kilometer distance between a home it, between one's home and and Bayview and, and Young Street. Okay, that's how we build our communities. Um, in order to, if you were to take a, a GO train to work, you would have to, you'd have to take a local bus to Young Street, then the bus would take you from Young Street, for example, to Wellington. Then you'd have to get off there and take another bus to go to the GO train station, which is ridiculous. That's, that's how many buses and how much money, when we could have um, a, a simple uh, bus that runs on, the, on that uh, perimeter of Young Street between Langstaff and Green Lane, um, and then goes into the major where the where the go train stations are. So I believe one is Langstaff, I believe one is Wellington, and then there's one on Davis. If they were to, and then Langstaff and Green Lane, if they were to take that bus and go into those stations and maybe charge 50 cents, I can guarantee you that every child, man, woman, you know, who works in the city well, would well, be taking that Well, bus. I hear you, but the whole issue is that we haven't really amalgamated the transit system. They took all the cities of Toronto, where they mm -hmm. had the extra level of government metro, just the way we have York Region administration, and they amalgamated all the cities to be Toronto. But nobody seems to be moving forward, and that's really a provincial issue, to amalgamate all the bus systems. But, so but, what, but what, do you think that they should be amalgamated? I, I mean, do you think that Toronto should be dictating to York Region what we need and what is good for our community? I, I think, think, I think it's why are he, I think that we need to be far more effective in the region and how we're we're doing our, you know, our bus system. Yeah, no, I don't agree with you, Maddie. I think that we need to amalgamate, and it shouldn't be Toronto is dictating to anybody. I don't think anybody's dictating to anybody. I think it should be a transit system that's run by the province for the Greater Toronto Area. We're the economic engine of the province, mm -hmm. um, even though you know we're not doing as well as we used to. And I think partly due to the traffic chaos and, and it's congestion. a good question because we used to and, uh, and I'm I'm just being facetious here maybe but I think that when I was taking a bus in the 80s it was actually better when it wasn't <laughs> when we didn't have YRT we ha or when we didn't have Viva because we had you know just take the go bus and it would stop at every major intersection in in New York region and there you go but now we've got two systems here double the money and how is it's it, all how is it it's serving us? I, I, I think it, <clears throat> we're at a point where, where York Region really has to do something about transit. And uh, I, I agree, I think amalgamating the transit systems is a good idea. Um, I think that uh, it'll, it'll play well into the, the promotion of uh, taking public transit in the whole entire York Region. Um, and you know what? I think it's time for um, us as York Region to step up to the plate and, and talk to Toronto and say, listen, we, we, we have problems, you have problems, we need to sit down at the table and we need to figure out a good way to, to, to work this out. Because well, I think the, the province has to order that. I, I, I don't know that that initiative um, is really going to happen on its own. And I think the GO train has to be part of it, Metrolinx. Mm -hmm. um, the whole YRT. I mean, the whole idea of Vivo was that if we're going to make these, uh, if we're going to make the, the seats comfortable and with tables and Wi-Fi, people are going to take it. I doubt very highly that ridership went up just because the buses no, were more no, comfortable no. and looked better um, you know, on I, Vivo. I agree, and I and I'm not trying to be, you know, I'm not trying to, you know, I, I discourage people from taking Vivo. I took. I, as an exa as an experiment, and I said I wasn't going to talk about this, but as an experiment, I did take a Viva line from Toronto Finch to uh, Newmarket, and I just it was not very pleasant, you know. And and no, there was not. I didn't find that you know the the bus structure it's, it's, was not was it's comfortable. Fr it's frustrating. We're going to take a short <coughs> break, and we're going to come back, and we're going to talk about. Um, the specific projects going on right now in York Region on transit. Thanks for watching. Be right back. The following program is brought to you by Rogers Anyplace TV. Enjoy exclusive content for free. Visit RogersAnyplaceTV.com.
I am Alan Drummond, an emergency physician in Perth, Ontario. I see the tragic consequences of improperly handled firearms too often. It is important to store firearms safely to prevent loss or theft, injuries and death. If there are firearms in your home, be sure they are unloaded and locked before storing. Store them in a firearms can.